restlessness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand Grateful, Lord, we are grateful, O Lord. Hallelujah, for you have done for us. Hallelujah, we are grateful, O Lord. Our Jesus, we are thankful, O Lord, for your faithfulness. We are thankful, O Lord, our Redeemer, for all you have done for us. Hallelujah. We are thankful, O Lord. All together, let magnify the name of the Lord this hour. This faithful God, the Almighty God, the ever constant God, the ever faithful God, the I am that I am, the mighty in power, the only one who speaks and his world is settled forever. Let's magnify the only one who is reliable, the only one who can be trusted in all seasons. Bless the Lord who had kept you up to this particular moment. Thank him for this bright new year. 
Magnify the name of the Lord for his sustenance. Magnify him for his provision. Magnify him for his love and kindness. Magnify him for his protection. Magnify him for his guide and guidance in your life. Magnify him because of the way the Lord has been making himself available in the affairs of our life. Whenever we call upon this our God, he answers. Bless the only one who answers prayers. The everlasting God who answers prayers. I want you to thank the Lord for all the testimonies, all that the Lord has been doing in our lives. How he's been healing us. I've been delivering us. I've been providing for our needs. I've been setting us free. I've been silencing all the mouth of our enemies in form of tiger and lion and whatever. Bless the name of the Lord for his light that the Lord has been used to chase away every power of darkness out of your life. Just magnify him today. Father, we bless you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we honor you. We lift your heart, we lift you up, we know that you are the almighty God. Thank you because of your backings, thank you for your faithfulness, thank you for your love and kindness, thank you for your support, thank you for everything that you are to us to God. We cannot thank you enough for all the benefits of being your child, oh God. We want to say thank you very, very much for the way you have been fighting our battles for us. Oh, we want to say thank you for providing for all our needs. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Daddy God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to call upon the Lord. What exactly do you want the Lord to do for you today? This is another episode of prayer reign. Oh, just call upon him, Lord. This is what I want you to do for me today. And don't forget... The Almighty God answers prayers here. Whenever we call upon him, he answers. Just magnify him. Just glorify him. And ask him right now, what do you want him to do for you? He's ready. Don't forget, he's standing there by your side. Listen to all your requests. And he's ready to do whatever you ask him today. Don't forget his promises. That whatever you are, the father of my name, he will do it for you. Just go ahead and ask him what you want the Lord to do. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Because you are the Lord who answers prayers. Whenever we call upon you, you do answer. Lord God, if your children are crying unto you now, answer them all in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever they need right now, according to your promise, let all be released into their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our dear Father, we are highly encouraged again and again because whenever we call upon you, you do answer. All the miracles of the past have been the courage that we have to come to you again and again and again because we have discovered that we have never come before you in vain. Anytime we come, we are blessed. Anytime we come, we are lifted. Anytime we come, we receive the answer to all that are presented before you. Father, we want to say thank you very much. Take all glory. Take all honor. Take all adoration. That's why we are here again today, to call upon your name. Father God, we pray like never before. Answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all. These your children that are connecting to the program today and the family they represent. I pray, Lord, that any of them that is down, let there be a lifting in the mighty name of Jesus. We are referred as any trace of darkness. Let there be light in the name of Jesus. In the place of our ashes, let there be beauty in the name of Jesus. Just magnify your name today like never before. And at the end of it all, let it be said that truly the Lord has met with his people and let only your name be glorified. We want to uh, thank you, Father God, on behalf of our parents in the Lord, our dear mommy, uh, Gio, and our daddy, Gio, 
for all that you are using them to do in transforming our life and nations. We want to thank you for keeping them, O oh God. We want to thank you for your anointing over their life. Take all glory. We pray that by your special grace, they will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. And your name will be continually glorified. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And wherever you are, lift up your hand and shout, Arisani, Alleluia. We want to register our appreciation one more time unto the Almighty God on behalf of our daddy and mommy Gio. We really appreciate what the Lord is doing in this prayer ring platform because of your prayers. We want to say that testimonies that we receive every day, at least, that have been not less than 10 test fires every day of the mighty things that Almighty God have been doing. And uh, as I've been declared, this year is indeed the year that is full of wonders. It has been a wonderful year indeed. And the name of the Lord, God himself that has been glorified, we, con we continually glorified all the days of our daddy and mommy's life. We really, really thank you very much. And uh, today, by God's grace, we are considering Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. The book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, with the message titled, The Sunrise of Hope. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Here, the Almighty God is saying something new will take place. Something new will be done. And he referred to us what we should expect. He said, there will be a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We want to ask a question before we move on. Is there be something that has never happened before? When the Almighty God is saying here, I will do a new thing, is there anything under the particular sun that is new? When we consider Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 to 10, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 to 10, the summary of that passage is, there is no new thing, under heaven. So things that have been happen to be the things that is going to be. And then there is no new thing under heaven. What then is the new thing that the Lord has promised here? Because he's saying he's going to do a new thing. And where we have read he's saying there's nothing new. It means something or an event will become new when it happens to a man for the first time. For example, when you see in the furious buying cars, to purchase a car, to own a car is not new every day. You see people buying their own cars. But the day you buy your own car, then something new has happened to you. So buying the car has been there again and again. You've been hearing about marriages. And you've been attending marriage ceremonies. 
So when we are talking about marriages or wedding today, it's not new. But the day it happened to you personally, then you are experiencing a new thing. Now things happen when it's happened to be an additional miracle. When you happen to experience it personally, when you have a personal encounter with the Almighty God by yourself. For example, in Mark chapter 1, verse 27, Mark chapter 1, verse 27, we discovered how the people were amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded even the unclean spirit, and they obeyed him. They saw it for the very first time. It had been happening. Demons have been driven out. But right now, it happens to them. Then they were amazed. From today onward, wonders will begin to happen to you. Miracles will begin to happen to you. That will surprise you because by his grace, you are going to experience something personally. You've been hearing about testimonies. You've been hearing how the people have been saying, the Lord has done it, the Lord has done it. But you've not experienced it. By this grace, this new thing will happen to you also. For example, to arise and walk is not new. To demand that it was right there in the, um, in the pool of Bethsaida. He has seen people who have been lame. If discovered people who could not walk, but right there before his eyes, they began to walk. He'd been there for 38 years, but his own day came. It became new to him when suddenly the owner of his life, his creator, appeared. And told him, rise, walk. And the Bible says, immediately, the man was made old. He took up his bed and walked. To him, new thing has happened to him. Probably you've been hearing about lifting. You've been hearing about promotion. You've been hearing about how God has put an end to stagnation. Perhaps you've been rejoicing with them also that they have been promoted. And here right now, I hereby declare into your life, it is your turn to arise and walk in every aspect of your life. Either the physical, either the spiritual, either the marital, in whatever form. It is your time to arise and walk. That's what happened to the man who had been laying down by beautiful gate. According to Act of Apostles chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Act 3, 7 to 8. We discover how immediately his feet and ankle bone received strength. And he leaping up stool and walked. And enter into them with the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. I'm trusting God this is your time. You could see the man. He began to leap. He began to dance. He began to praise the Almighty God because something new has happened to him. I want you to arrive wherever you are. It is your turn to arise. It is your turn. To begin to dance for joy. It is your turn to come out of that particular stagnation. It had never happened to you before. But it's your turn today to experience it. Are you right there on the sick bed? And you have not been able to walk. You have seen somebody who brought to the world where you were. 
how the, the fellow have been discharged. And you have been asking, when will this thing happen to me also? It is your turn also to walk out of that, from that hospital by your own leg too. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is your turn to be visited. It is your turn to arise. It is your turn to walk. It is your turn to experience that miracle in your life. Wherever you are, call upon the name of the Lord. It is my turn to arise. It is my turn to be promoted. It is my turn to experience that enlargement. It is my turn to experience that lifting. It is my turn to experience that healing. Call upon the Lord because the Lord wants to put it to practice in your life. Ah, you have been witnessing this thing all over again and again in the life of others. The Lord is saying right now, it is your turn. Call upon the name of the Lord. It is your turn. Prophesy it right now. It is my turn to arise. It is my turn to walk. It is my turn to begin to experience lifting. It is my turn. And I join my faith with your faith right now. That by his grace, it is your turn. By his power, it is your turn. By his mercy, it is your turn. In the name of Jesus, let your amen be heard in heaven. Amen. Number two, putting an end to barrenness is not new to Elizabeth. He spent a lot of years being barren. So he had seen people who were barren in the community where she lived and how barrenness ended in their lives. So it was not a new thing to Elizabeth. But the day Elizabeth took in. Ha! The day the baby began to mourn right there in the womb. And the day she delivered her baby, that was a new thing to her. Ah, don't forget, something becomes new when it happens to you personally. Are, he, are you here? Because according to that Luke chapter 1, verse 24 to 25, Luke chapter 1, verse 24 to 25 say, And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus had the Lord dealt with me. In the day we are in, he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. It was so shocking that he had to hide himself for, th for, for, three, for five months. I say, is it true? She was looking at herself. My husband, is it true? Is, she wanted to know whether what she had been happy to her wasn't a dream. It is after that five months, she spoke out. Wow. So the Lord has been able to deal with me to take away my reproach. What is the reproach? These people serve the law. These people were really, when you are talking about the people of God, and the people will be able to have been saying, you serve God. What is the result of serving the law right now? And if we that have not been serving God, we are better off. Are there anyone listening to the sound of this message? And people have been yearning at you, so to say. They've ridiculed your life. They've said all kind of things. They've been asking, where is your God? The time has come. When your God will answer them all by performing that miracle in your life, I want you to call upon the Lord right now. Whatever is the spirit of barrenness in your life, let it be banished out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, pray right now that law uproot barrenness out of my life. I've listened to others. Give it testimony. Some of them triplet, some of them twins, some of them quadruplet, and so on and so forth. Some of them well, Lord God, I want you to visit me also. Let me have this testimony also that you are the almighty God of fruitfulness. Whatever therefore represent barrenness in my life, let the spirit of barrenness depart from me now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
pray that prayer with all your heart. Barrenness will be a stranger to you from today. Ah, you have been attending naming ceremonies. You have been rejoicing with others. It is your turn that people will gather together to rejoice with you. And I stand upon this exalted altar today. That name or the name of Jesus Christ that is above every other name. Whatever is known as barrenness in your life. The appointment of barrenness in your life is over right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe your barrenness is not physical. It might be financial barrenness, uh, uh, creativity barrenness, barrenness of idea, and whatever form is that barrenness, or whatever you laid your hand on has never succeeded. Today, barrenness will be terminated in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You begin to experience fruitfulness, uh, physically, maritally, career-wise, business-wise, academically, and in every aspect of your life, politically, in the name of Jesus Christ, you begin to experience full, I mean, fruitfulness in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree right now, whatever represents barrenness in your life, and every agent of barrenness, the almighty God himself will terminate the appointment of barrenness out of your life. In the name of Jesus, begin to have the personal spirit of fruitfulness from today onwards. In the name of Jesus, this is the sunrise of hope. I pray, I write now that by the special grace of God, the fruitfulness will begin to appear in your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number three, according to Mark chapter 10. Verse 51 to 52. Mark chapter 10. Verse 51 to 52. For a blind man to see is not new. But it was new to Bartimaeus. The day Bartimaeus heard about Jesus. He heard several blind people that received their sight. So one day he heard that Jesus was passing by. Ah, he just decided, today is my own day. I'm going to have the personal experience. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He began to cry. We know the story very well. And before the end of that day, he began to see. No wonder. He began to follow Jesus in the way. He just, I'm going to live any longer. He witnessed, not second hand now, one on one with the miracle that could open his eyes. Ah, you have been hearing so many testimonies. How God opens the way for people. How God opened their eyes to see. Or perhaps you are physically blind too. You'll be hearing about Jesus Christ who had all the power to open the eyes. In fact, there was a man who had no eyes at all. According to John chapter 9. Jesus had to mold the soil, and what he called clay, and put the eye where it's supposed to be. Go and wash yourself in slab, water or slab. The man began to see. He's the creator, and it will be a new thing to you today because the master Jesus Christ himself will visit you personally. You begin to see. You begin to see. You begin to see in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to lift up your hand now because it's the high time you had your eyes open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God is here. Ah, maybe you are physically blind. As you are listening to the sound and the voice of this message, your, your blindness is over in the mighty name of Jesus. And all you are blind in certain things. You cannot see the success around you. You cannot see how far off. There was a time in this episode of the, of the prayer ring, we discover that there are certain people who cannot see afar off, and we look at Lord and for that, that matter. Ah, Lord saw around him all the greenness, all the, uh, all the mineral resources around, and say, well, it is good to settle down here, not knowing very soon that city will be destroyed, called Sodom and Gomorrah. Almighty God, 
Matara Kosontia, I decree right now that the eyes of all of us will be opened by you. We begin to see our Pharaoh. Begin to pray right now that in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will open your eyes. The Lord will open your eyes. You will see ahead of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When your eyes cannot see what you ought to see, you begin to panic. You remember Elisha. Ah, right there, and the son of the prophet, the servant that was him. Oh, there was, they were surrounded by soldiers, the Syrian army. Only what the boy could see happened to the Syrian army. He could not see all the chariots of fire around them. Ah, Father, we are perished. The Lord, the, the prophet just opened, Lord opened his eyes. And by the time he saw what he ought to see, he had calmed down. Many, many of things are happening today in all the nations of the world. If all what you can see, the weapons of war, all the new bad news, everything around you, no wonder the rates of hypertension today have been higher than before. The layer of high blood pressure today have been higher than before. The way of people have suffered stroke today at higher than than before because all what they could see is what they hear around them. They cannot see the glory of God. They cannot see the power of God. They cannot see the strength of God. They they cannot see the promises of the Almighty God. They cannot see the hand of God that they can carry his own people. Pray that now that the Lord will open your eyes to see so that you see beyond the environment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That what can settle our heart. The, the master Jesus Christ says, let not your heart be troubled. According to John chapter 14 verse 1. Say, ye yeah, believe in God. Believe also in me. Ah, how will your heart not be troubled? If what you can see around you, your immediate environment, the wars and rumors of war, but you say, believe in me, God can open your eyes to see the promises of God. God can open your eyes to see the power of God. God can open your eyes to see the strength of the Almighty God. God can open your eyes to see how powerful the Almighty God that decided to pull down all the wall of Jericho around you. God can open your eyes to see how you have been fighting in your battle for you. Say, Lord, open my eyes to see, today to see uh, beyond my immediate environment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. You've heard testimony upon testimony. Our people, our God opened the eyes of people and they are testifying that when they began to see, ah, they have rest of mind. They have peace. They can now sleep. Pray that God will open your eyes too in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for having answered. Glory be to your holy name. Honor be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I join my faith with your faith right now that this almighty God will open your eyes. <laughs> you begin to see beyond... Oh, your immediate environment, you begin to see ahead of time, far away, far, far off, so that you can know what the Lord is actually planning for you. Jesus Christ, who endured the cross, because he saw something beyond the cross, he saw glory. And the Bible says, according to the book of every day, he endured the cross because of the glory that he saw. If all what Jesus could see happened to be the cross, the immediate environment, ah, he would not be able to endure. But he saw the glory. The glory he saw made him to enjoy, I mean, to endure the cross. May God open your eyes to see far, far, far ahead of time in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. That is the first aspect of that particular uh, passage. Let me read it again. Isaiah 49, verse, I mean 43 rather, verse 19. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall bring forth, and you shall not know it. I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make a way in the wilderness. After the Lord had decided to do anything in our life, which we have just discovered, he said, I will make a way in the wilderness. That means a lot of things. And by the special grace of God, let key 
into some of the reasons or meanings of that particular uh, statement. Number one, according to Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, a wilderness is a stage of being abandoned. And when the Almighty God says now, He will make a way in the wilderness, God is saying He can turn a deserted place to a place of feasting. Places that have been abandoned, places that have been rejected, places that have been deserted. The Almighty God is saying here and right now, I can make that place to become a place of feasting. In that Exodus, chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Toss here the Lord God of Israel, let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. How do you think a wilderness can become an environment when feast will be taking place? God can turn a wilderness to become a place of feast. And Isaiah 32, verse 15 to 16, Isaiah 32 15 to 16, there the Bible says, Until the Spirit is poured upon us from our eye, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest, then judgments are dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. You can see, when the Spirit of God is poured upon a man, the desert life, of such a man, the life of wilderness of such a man will begin to receive what you call fruitfulness, fruitful feed. In other words, you have been passing through the life of desert. You've been abandoned, you've been boycotted, you've been ridiculed, you've been forgotten. Nobody is trying to even come closer to you. You've been deserted, you've been all kind of things. And God is saying here, by the time my spirit is released upon you definitely. The wilderness of your life will be turned a fruitful field. God is saying now, it can change your life and destiny. That particular wilderness experience, God can turn it around to be a, to be a place of feasting. We are people we love to associate themselves with you. We are people we love to come closer to you. We are people we love to celebrate with you. We are people will be looking for you and definitely will be sought for by the time the Spirit of the Almighty God is released upon your life. One more prayer, man. Just one prayer for that. Just call upon the Lord now. Almighty God, visit my life and every aspect of wilderness my life. Turn me to a fruitful land in the mighty name of Jesus. Turn my life around, O oh God, and every aspect of my life that I have been experiencing wilderness, the type of wilderness in my life, let all turn to be a fruitful field, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Terminate every experience of wilderness out of my life. You have promised that one, that you are going to turn a wilderness to a, a, a river. Almighty God, Turn the wilderness of my life to a place of feasting in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Stay under the matter of transforming wilderness. Number two, according to Exodus chapter 4, verse 27 to 28. Exodus chapter 4. Verse 27 to 28. Wilderness, there is a place where someone can be easily miss his way. And God is saying right now, I can find you and say a part to you in that wilderness. I can find you. Maybe right there, you are totally lost. You have no bearing any longer. You can't trace your life any longer. Everything is totally confusing. Everything is upside down. Just like Moses in that wilderness for 40 solid years. 
no more beyond in nothing. But the Lord paid him a fish there in that wilderness where everything concerning his life is totally in love. As it were. When you are talking about his dreams, everything was gone. You are talking about his yearnings, his appreciation, his seed. Everything was gone. One day, the Lord paid him a visit. And I'm trusting the Almighty God today in that wilderness where you have retired to faith. In that wilderness where you are sitting down there, the Bible says there are certain people who sat in the wilderness bound with chains and shackles. Many what? And they say in part of this world, in, in part of the world, say they've retired to faith. They've retired to faith. They couldn't get the bearing any longer. So they take it at their own, at their own destiny. That is what the case of Moses. But the Lord paid him a visit. And by the time you get to Exodus chapter 4, where we have just quoted, let me read verse 27 and 28. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Can you hear that? Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And right there, Aaron went there, met Moses in that wilderness. They killed themselves. And in verse 28, Moses began to tell Aaron, All the words of the Lord who has sent him, and all the signs which he has commanded him. God met him in the wilderness, turned himself around, and sent a pass to in that wilderness where you are. Not only that God will locate you, he will send effort to you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Isaiah 35, verse 5 to 7, Isaiah 35, verse 5 to 7, we can see how God will begin to make the blind to have their eyes open and the ear of the deaf to begin to hear. How the lame will begin to live and live for joy. And the tongue of the dumb will begin to speak. For in the wilderness, listen to that. For in the wilderness shall water break out and streams in the desert. Because the Lord God has a way of turning the wilderness to place. And right there, you begin to see miracles, signs and wonders. The wilderness of your life has not been experiencing miracles. Oh, all the steps you have been taking, all this while, that nothing to show for it. Somehow, you have been struggling and sweating and toiling, like Peter did all the night. Nothing to show for it. The Almighty God is saying it right now, ah, right there, your eye will begin to open. You begin to sing, to, to sing for joy. Your ear will open. The lame will walk. Because in the wilderness of your life, water will break out and the name of the Lord be glorified. And the Lord saying, I will do this one so that all your tests can be quenched by the special grace of God. And everybody will know that I have done this. That is what the Lord has decided to do. The Lord has, is ready to terminate all the wilderness experience. Because this year, as our Father and the Lord that the year, Debo year says, is the year of wonders. And God will perform that wonders in your life too. I want you to pray right now. Almighty God, let God hear your voice and say, Lord, pay me a visit in my wilderness experience. Not only that, send a part to me. You pay Moses a visit and you send a run to him. Send a pass to me, a pass of destiny. Pay me a visit in that wilderness experience where I've been passing. Moses spent 40 solid years there. 40 solid years. I don't know how many years you have been right there in the wilderness of experience where your life has no bearing any longer. But the Lord can pay you a visit there. Just the way the Almighty God paid Moses a visit and then send a run to him, the destiny helper. Pray, oh God, pay me a visit and send helpers to me in the mighty name of Jesus. Take me out of this wilderness. Let me begin to fulfill destiny. You have the reason why you have sent me to this world. Say, oh Lord, pay me a visit in this wilderness of life. And Lord, send epas to me in the name of Jesus. And the Lord is ready to do that one right now. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To him be all glory, all honor, all adoration. Let's conclude, finally, according to 1 Samuel. Chapter 30, verse 1 to 4. 
4 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 4. A wilderness is a state of hopelessness. And God is saying right now, in that state of hopelessness, I can bring hope. That is sunshine of hope. You know the story very well. It was in this particular wilderness. Uh, David and his men left the village where they were. Before they came back, enemies had come and they have carried away all that they had, including their children, their wives, their animals, everything. They therefore set the village on fire. When they came, the Bible says they began to weep until they have no more power to weep. From that moment, in that wilderness of confusion, wilderness of hopelessness, they cried unto God. Just the way you have cried to God today. Do you know what God did? God said, pursue. You will recover all. How come? Because when God speaks, it is settled forever. And by the time you get to 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 19. 1 Samuel 30, 19. There the Bible says, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither son nor daughter, neither spoil or anything that they had taken to them. They feed, recovered all as the Lord lives. Whatever you are, Lord, right there in the wilderness of life. Oh, yes, the, the certain thing in your life. You have missed all this thing. You are now left alone. You are now being abandoned. If I did, if he wanted to cry and cry and cry and cry, the other people were crying. They wanted to stone him. When no one around you was ready to help, the Lord will help you. You will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. You will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me conclude by saying this. There can be a total recovery after a total loss. That is what happened here. There can be a total recovery after a total loss. Ah, you have lost everything. The almighty God is saying here right now, because according to Isaiah 41, 18 to 20, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 18 to verse 20, I will open river in high places and fountain in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. And I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the cedar tree, and the mare, and the holy tree, and oil tree. And I will set in the desert the fair tree, and the pine, and the buff tree together. Now look at verse 20. That they may see, and know, and consider, and understand together that the hands of the Lord had done this. God has decided to do that one so that it can be praised, it can be glorified, it can be magnified. This is what the Lord has decided. So whatever you have lost, you can recover all. That is the sunshine of hope in the law. That is the reason why I want to appeal to any of you who are yet to give your life to Jesus Christ. What are you waiting for? We are living in the world where you can be easily penetrated. The life can squeeze you. The life can disfigure you. The life can tear you into pieces. The life can betray you. The life can walk on your life and ruin your destiny and everything. But with Jesus Christ, you are going to discover the power of the Almighty God will set you free. That is the reason why wherever you are right now, what are you waiting for? Bow your head and surrender your life to the only one who can give you the sunshine of hope. The sunshine of hope. The sunshine of hope. The Lord God has all the power to rescue you, to save you, to deliver you, to set you free. And we have your name written in the book of life. That is the defeated of being a child of God. Bow your head wherever you are and surrender your life to him. To you all be glory and all honor, all adoration. Father God, all the souls that are crying unto you now, save them according to your promise. Let their name be written in the book of life. Claim their sin with your precious blood. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have done that one, where oh, you see all the contact details on the screen immediately after. We would love to hear from you. To God be the glory. Every one of us, lift up your hand right now. Father God, I commit all to your able hand. And I pray that in your name that is above every other name, we are ever 
they have been experiencing any form of wilderness in their life, Almighty God, take them out of that wilderness. Whatever, oh God, they are experiencing right now, let it be known by all that you are still the Almighty God by rescuing them, by delivering them, by saving them, by setting them free. In the name of Jesus. You are coming out of that wilderness experience. And the Lord lives. And it is settled already. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Wherever you are. Let somebody shout. A resounding hallelujah. Amen.